we've known for decades that it is never safe to touch mercury. When it's in its liquid form, it can actually be absorbed into the skin. But even the simple vapors that come off of mercury can be absorbed into the body. In the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, in Rethinking the Dental Amalgam Dilemma, an integrated toxicological approach, we read, mercury has been identified as one of the most toxic, non-radioactive materials known to man. But we've been told for 150 years, it's safe to put in your mouth. Well, let's actually look at the research. Does it increase the rate of death in infants? What does it do to the brain? Can it increase rates of Alzheimer's disease, depression, anxiety, and even Parkinson's disease? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Now you've probably heard about the Mad Hatter. Now this became popular in certain uh, fictitious novels and these kinds of things, but this term, the Mad Hatter, goes all the way back into medieval Europe. This was a time where hat makers would cure hats using mercury, and as a result of it, they were breathing in those toxic vapors all the time, and they ended up being called mad as a hatter. They noticed that people who, who were working with these hats had higher levels of insanity, and so they called these people mad hatters, or mad as a hatter. Is it safe to put in your mouth? That's the question. Is it safe to put it in as a an amalgam filling? Now, an amalgam comes from the term amalgamation, the mixture of different things. So you'll have different forms of metal and mercury put together and put into the teeth of human beings. So let's look at the research. Research reveals that amalgam or mercury fillings release mercury vapor at 2 to 28 micrograms per day, and it was then discovered that approximately 80% of this mercury is absorbed into the body. But maybe it's okay, right? Well, let's find out. You may have heard that dentists have some of the highest rates of suicide of any profession. It's 68% higher than your average person. I'm gonna share with you an incredible story at the end of this of a dentist friend of mine who was tested and found to be mercury toxic. I'm gonna tell you about the mental health struggles that he went through and what he did to reverse it. But let's look at mental health and amalgam or mercury fillings. Research reported in the journal Psychological Reports found that women with amalgam fillings had more fatigue, insomnia, more intense anger, anxiety, depression, and more troublemaking decisions than those who did not have amalgam fillings. What they found is that people who did not have amalgam fillings were simply happier people. They were less stressed, they were less anxious, and this is interesting. Now, this is just an association, but it's a very interesting association going with the fact that we know that mercury is a neurotoxin. Is it coming from this? We're gonna look at more research. Some of the symptoms of mercury poisoning, especially some of the later symptoms, are things like feeling irritable. Maybe you, you, you're just very impatient. It could be that you're shy or antisocial. You don't, you don't like to be around people. You might struggle with anxiety. Many of the people end up struggling with insomnia. One of the things that may be seen are tremors, you know, shaking hands and these kind of things that could be either in the face or in the hands. Some people will find they struggle with concentration. Other people will find that they struggle with their memory. Here's research out of PLOS One in 2018, perinatal death and exposure to dental amalgam fillings during pregnancy. Notice what we read. It says the absolute risk of perinatal death ranged from 0.2 in women with no amalgam filled teeth to 0.67 in women with 13 or more teeth filled with amalgam fillings. In this situation, you see that it could triple the chances of death. Then when they look at the, all the confounding factors, they say that it's nearly double the risk of having perinatal death. So that would probably include just before the birth that the baby dies in the womb or just after death at some point that the baby dies. And so we can see that nearly 
nearly double the risk of death. And so now even the FDA, because I know there's some people might be watching and you think, oh, this is quackery. We're only looking at research in the journals, in the peer reviewed journals that are out there. And so we're finding nearly a double the risk of perinatal death in mothers that had mercury fillings. But let's look at research on amalgam fillings and Alzheimer's. Compared with people without amalgam fillings, those with amalgam fillings had higher rates of Alzheimer's, and it's even more highly correlated in women. Research reveals a higher likelihood of having Alzheimer's if you have amalgam fillings or mercury in your mouth. Amalgam fillings and Parkinson's disease. A study of 20,000 people revealed a 57% increased risk of Parkinson's disease in those who had amalgam or mercury fillings. So we're seeing correlations with mercury in the mouth. And once again, we've known for decades that it's a toxin, it's a neurotoxin, it's one of the most dangerous toxins out there, and yet we've been told it's just fine in your mouth. Now this just doesn't really, it doesn't make any sense, right? But I want to share with you a story about a friend of mine who is a dentist, and what happened is one day he woke up with these oppressive, guilty feelings. And it was just oppressive, continual guilt. And so what he would do is he would try to make things right. He would apologize. And, and then after he would do that, immediately another memory of some past offense would come to his mind. And he was just struggling with this, going over and over these things in his mind. And finally, he went to a doctor. And so anytime people struggle with these things, what do you do? They just throw you on a depression medication. And so that's what they did. And it didn't help. And so then he was sent to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist said, no problem, we'll take care of this. We just gotta figure out the right dosage. And once we find the right dosage, you'll be good to go. And so they gave him more and more and more and it didn't work. And so what happened? Finally, a friend of his said, hey, you know, recognizing that he was a dentist, he said, being that you're a dentist, you should be tested for mercury poisoning or mercury toxicity. So he went to be tested. He had such high levels of mercury and realized, wow, this is the problem. And he was happy because it's good to find a reason for things, right? Now, I'm a strong believer that all diseases have a cause. Disease does not come without a cause. If you have a disease and you can discover the cause, it might be able to be reversed. Now we know there's certain diseases that it's just too late. I mean, genetic problems, uh, it could be too late. But in these kind of situations, it's good to know, wow, something's wrong. And so he ended up going on a chelation regimen with something called DMSA that he went on with this particular doctor who had tested him and as he began to go on this chelation therapy. Chelation has to do with taking some kind of substance that in the body kind of grabs onto some kind of element and it pulls it out of the body. And, and so as he was doing this, what happened is his symptoms got worse. And so he tells his doctor and his doctor said, good, that means it's working. And so it actually got worse for a while. And then six months into taking it, his anxiety, this OCD, these obsessive compulsive emotions and, and repetitive thoughts changed and they went away. And I believe what happened is at one point he had to actually give up his dental practice because obviously uh, dentists are continually working on teeth and they're drilling into teeth with mercury and it's research has found that they have massively higher. I think I read like 40 times the amount of mercury in the body of a dentist than in your average person. And so he had to get out of it because of his, the psychological disorder that he was going through. And then after he was healed, he was able to actually go back into practice once again. And so this is such good news to know that there is hope for people who are mercury toxic. And, and by the way, don't just expect that you're mercury toxic without a blood test. Don't, you know, people, you know, oh, I so struggle with stress. Maybe I have mercury toxicity. You always wanna have a blood test to find out for sure if something is actually your issue. But I wanna share with you what not to do. I made a massive mistake and you, it was dumb. I'm just gonna say that. So I, I had, I knew that mercury was not good in the body and I thought, man, I got like seven fillings in my mouth and what they found is that each one increases the amount of mercury in your system. And so I, I, thought, I thought, man, I gotta get rid of it. Now I was in another country at the time and I was living there for about a year 
and I found a dentist and I said, hey, would you take out my mercury fillings, my amalgam fillings? And he said, sure. And I went over there and I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. And he said, uh, so do you, do you want it to be numb? And I said, is it going to cost more money? He said, yeah. I said, okay, don't numb it. And so he was drilling and drilling. And as he's drilling, it's painful when it's not numbed. And he was not doing it. If you're going to have this done, go to a specialist who specializes in having this taken out because it can actually be more dangerous getting it out maybe than leaving it in because all those, all the vapor that you're breathing in could actually be very dangerous. So if you go to a, a specialist in it, they're going to have some kind of a machine that's going to suck the vapors away from you. I didn't do that. It was terrible. And he wasn't even having me spit. So it's going all over my mouth. And, and I'm like, hey man, can, can I spit? And he's like, Okay. And so uh, I'm, I'm trying to get it out of my mouth. It was terrible. And when I came home that day, uh, my wife tells me I looked absolutely terrible. This was 16 years ago. And it was a terrible way to do it. Do not do it that way. Not a good idea at all. The good thing is I came back to the States later, told a friend of mine who does specialize in actually extracting these mercury fillings. He said he probably didn't get it all out. Do you mind if, would you come in? And he did it for free. So he wasn't trying to make any money off me and he did a great job. He went in and literally drilled them all out, seven of them again. And sure enough, I think there was more mercury down in there. He hadn't gotten out the first time. And so he did it again and then he put me on that DMSA. And it was amazing because back in the day then, I used to struggle with allergies in the house we were living in because there was kind of some mildew issues. And while I took DMSA, I had no allergy issues. It was, it was fantastic. I don't know that it's supposed to help that or not, but it was fantastic at the time. And so I went through that and I'm so thankful that I did actually, you know, use that and get rid of it. But I would challenge you, do not just go ahead and do something like that. I'm not telling you to do this at all. I just wanted to give you the research because I know, and the good news is, even the FDA is actually coming out and saying, yes, you should be careful with this. Here's what the FDA is now saying. This is right on the FDA website, fda.gov. Recommendations about the use of dental amalgams in certain high-risk populations, FDA safety communication. Notice what it says. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is providing recommendations about the use of dental amalgams in certain groups of people who may be at greater risk to the potential adverse health effects of mercury exposure to include pregnant women and their developing fetuses, women who are planning to become pregnant, nursing women and their newborns and infants, children, especially those younger than six years of age, people with pre-existing neurological diseases, how do you know if you have that? I mean, you might not have had a pre-existing one, but it might exacerbate something in the future. People with impaired kidney function and people with known heightened sensitivity or allergy to mercury and or other compounds of dental amalgam. So the good news is even the FDA has come out and given us the truth on this matter that we ought to be seriously careful if we're thinking about getting a filling on what to put in our mouth. Now, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, hit the like button, share it with a friend, check out all the rest of our videos. God bless and have a fantastic day.